Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Julie Baker. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I am the CEO of Californians for the Arts. And today I'm coming from the land of the Nevada City Rancheria Nisanon, who are currently fighting for their uh, federal recognition. And I'm here with my colleague and friend, Tom DeCaney from Create California. And we are so excited today to be presenting to you what our uh, summation of legislative budget um, asks and legislation that we are working on this uh, legislative session here in California, 2023 to 2024, all part of Arts, Culture, and Creativity Month this April, where our theme is art in all. All right, go to the next slide. And uh, this is going to give you a bit of an overview of all the things that we're working on. So you can see is it, there's a lot that we're going to be talking about. We're going to keep it as brief as possible and give you an opportunity to review this yourselves, both through this recording, as well as on um, the our website where you'll have opportunity to download longer uh, uh, information about about these issues. And so um, I'm just gonna hand it to my friend, Tom, to introduce himself as well. Great, thanks, Julie. Um, thank you all for tuning in today to learn a little bit more about our legislative and advocacy agenda for the 23-24 budget and legislation session. My name is Tom DeCaney and I'm the executive director of Create California. And today I'm coming to you from San Francisco, home of the Ohlone people, um, and thrilled to be working with everybody and particularly partnering with Californians for the Arts on our first inaugural Joint Arts Advocacy Day in Sacramento. That's right. It's so exciting. It's been such a wonderful collaboration, and we encourage people to do this in your own communities. Look for your partners to work with in terms of advocacy um, in order to uplift and um, center the value and importance of artists, cultural bearers, arts education, creative workers in your community. So this gives you a good overview. Hopefully you've had a time to read it, but we're gonna go through each one of these. So we'll go to the next slide and we'll start with protect cultural funding. And this is uh, something that's been happening this year. We're in a very different budget uh, year than we, years past where we've seen uh, a lot more funding uh, from both the federal government and here in the state of California that has allowed us to have tremendous amount of funding for arts and culture than we've ever seen before, unprecedented amounts. Unfortunately, though, the budget picture has been changing this year. And when uh, Governor Newsom made his January budget proposal, he included some cuts to the arts, which, of course, between our two organizations, we oppose and we really uh, want to support the protection of cultural funding. So I'm going to give you uh, the first two. Uh, the first one here is protecting 20 million for cultural districts. In 2015, the cultural districts program was established in the legislature by, uh, authored by Assemblymember Richard Bloom. And uh, in 2017, the first 14 were designated through the state arts agency, the California Arts Council. However, it wasn't until last year, 22-23, budget that we actually were able to see funding for the first time come to the cultural districts program. It took seven years to get $30 million for the cultural districts program here in the state of California, which would allow us to actually expand the cultural districts program beyond the first the, for, the pilot 14. And one of the things that was also done in these past years was a report. And in the report, it showed that although this is a terrific program, number one, it needed to be funded. And number two, it also needed to expand to really reflect the demographics uh, of the state of California. So we want to see this funding remain for the cultural districts program and particularly for the expansion of the cultural districts program. So the governor's budget includes 20 million to be cut that is out of the 30 million, the 10 million has remained and has already been um, allocated to the 14 pilot districts. So this is in order to expand the cultural districts program. And again, lots more information on our website about what are cultural districts, why they're value, why they bring community and economic development value to your community and how important they are to um, centering cultural culture and cultural bearers in our communities and maintaining uh, a community that uh, is able to uh, then continue in that in that area. 
Um, the next bu bucket that we are also um, opposing and is again in the governor's uh, January budget proposal was to um, cut $29 million from the museum grant program. This program goes through uh, the Natural Resources Agency. It is a grant program that um, has been established for many years, but only received funding in the last several years. And again, uh, it took a long time to get this money, and now they're looking at cutting it. And we know how critically important our museums are to our communities, to education, and to economic uh, impact as well. There are 1,500 California museums. They have a six and a half billion dollar impact. They employ over 80,000 people and they see over 22 million visitors. And specifically, this funding was really to address the impact of COVID on museums, as well as to ensure that they're really focusing on um, communities that had not received funding like this before. So for example, in the $21 million that had already been allocated through the museum grant program of the 50 million, 79% of the recent grants went to first time awardees. So we can see how critically important funding like this is to both of our cultural communities in terms of cultural districts and museum grants. And that is why we oppose it and we wanna protect this funding in the budget. Tom? Great, thanks, Julie. Going to create California's top priority for the budget under the protect category, um, we are advocating for the protection of the full arts, music, and instructional materials discretionary block grant. Uh, the full block grant, which is a one-time discretionary block grant, was budgeted last year at $3.5 billion. Um, Governor Newsom in his budget has proposed a cut of $1.2 billion. Um, these are one-time funds. These are different and distinct from Prop 28 funds, which I'll speak to a little bit later. And these are already funds that are in, um, in allocation to districts. So districts have planned extensively for the use of these funds. Um, they are for implementation of the new arts and music standards. Um, we were very pleased that the leadership by Assembly Member Warner Horvath for her leadership in making sure we got the $3.5 billion um, and we want to see the full funding implemented over the next three years. Um, it's particularly important because a number of school districts and local education agencies have already gone through extensive community planning for how these funds are going to be implemented. And removing the $1.2 billion from the budget would shortchange those districts, both on their planning efforts, and in many cases, they've already encumbered these funds. Um, again, the funds are discretionary, so they're used for a potential wide use of purposes, very flexible. Um, and as one-time funds distinct from Prop 28, we advocate uh, that the 1.2 billion proposed cut uh, be returned and funded at the full level of $3.5 billion. Thank you, Tom. And we'll go to the next slide. And I think what's important too, one of the things that Tom highlighted here is one-time funding. And I think that's important for folks to understand is that these are not ongoing. In other words, these were one-time funding uh, proposals that got through the legislature, through the uh, governor's budget, and uh, we want to ensure that they continue uh, for that, at least that one time. All right, Tom. Right. Well, on investments uh, for new investments, um, Create California supports the proposed $100 million in one-time funding for high school student cultural enrichment. These would be funds for currently proposed by the governor and his budget for uh, field trips for high school seniors. Create California is advocating for a broader use for all high school students, not just high school seniors. Uh, again, these are one-time funds. Um, they would go, the funds would go to the California Department of Education for distribution to local education agencies. But many of those funds would support our nonprofit arts, arts partners from museums to music venues to any number of places where students might get the opportunity for cultural enrichment. Um, so we support uh, this new proposed investment of $100 million one time uh, for student cultural enrichment. Excellent. And in terms of new budget items, we're excited because Senator Ben Allen, who authored Senate Bill 628, which is the California Creative Workforce Act, which our organization in partnership with our lobbying organization, California Arts Advocates, sponsored. Um, and it was passed in and signed by the governor in 2021, but this has remained an unfunded mandate. In other words, it establishes that creative workforce development is a state priority, but it has no funding behind it in order to 
implement the bill. So this year, uh, noting what's going on in the budget, we've asked for a very modest amount in order to pilot the Create the Core program. And this would be the Earn and Learn Apprenticeship Program as part of Senate Bill 628 in alignment with the governor's um, uh, program that has gone through the California Arts Council, which is called the Creative Core, which was the single largest appropriation to the California Arts Council of $60 million. And that is already going out into districts now. In order to create the core, folks that could actually become a part of the creative core, these earn and learn opportunities um, would be part of this $5 million. And it's really in, intended to um, serve communities that have experienced barriers to employment in the creative industries. And um, in order to pilot this with this funding, we would see about 65 apprenticeships around the state of California with this pilot. And these all also include a living wage as part of the apprenticeship program. So these are earn and learn apprenticeship programs for the Create the Core program with a $5 million pilot budget ask from Senator Ben Allen that was a new item this year, and we're really thrilled to support that. The second item is Senate Bill 1116, the Performing Arts Equitable Payroll Fund. This was um, authored by Senator Anthony Portantino and brought forward and sponsored by Actors Equity and Theater Producers League of Southern California, along with um, tremendous support from our organization, California Arts Advocates, and an amazing grassroots coalition of theaters and people in the performing arts world across California, in particular emphasis uh, with small budget nonprofit performing arts organizations under $2 million. And this is really to help with um, uh, the payroll expenses that have increased due to uh, working within the parameters of Assembly Bill 5. And um, we are excited to see this budget item being introduced, we support it. We see that this has been a tremendous impact to our small theaters and small performing arts organizations. And this is a real sub subsidizing payroll and support in grants for that. And with an emphasis on starting with the smaller budget organizations getting more funding um, and then decreasing as you go up in your budget size up to $2 million. So it's really uh, an equitable way to distribute funds to support and keeping uh, live arts here in California. And then finally, just introduced, we're really thrilled to be working with Tasha Borner Horvath's office, Assembly Member Horvath, uh, in the AB 812. And this is regarding artist housing and cultural districts. The language is just coming out uh, now, and there will be a hearing coming up soon regarding this. But this is one of the issues that we hear over and over again from communities across California, which is the need to create affordable housing for artists in order for artists to continue to be able to live and survive and thrive in um, our uh, communities in California. So um, we're excited to see this being introduced and you'll have more information as it develops throughout the legislative session, but we are in support of AB 812. Next slide. If I could just add to that, Julia, on AB 812, that does include teaching artists. So from Create California's perspective, we're really excited about the potential for this bill as well. Excellent. All right, we'll go to the next slide and take it away, Tom. Thank you, Julie. Um, well, one of the bigger items for Create California's legislative agenda is to ensure the implementation of Prop 28. Uh, this is the ballot measure that we voted on in California, which passed with over 64% of the vote. It's one of the most popular measures ever in education ballot measures in California. Um, it's the Arts and Music Funding Guarantee and Accountability Act, and it dedicates an ongoing revenue stream for arts education in pre-K through 12th grade public schools. Um, and we're right now, the budget estimate is approximately 941 million in the first year of implementation. We do expect that final number might come down a little bit since the formula for Prop 28 is based on prior year public education funding through the Prop 98 guarantee. Um, so we expect to probably be closer to 900 million annually, but this is the first ever 
ongoing dedicated revenue stream for arts education in California, and it's one of the largest in the country. So we are thrilled that California voters have uh, prioritized creativity and arts education in schools. Uh, but now we have the tall order of making sure it's implemented with fidelity to the voters intent. Um, the first thing is to ensure that no school uses the funds to supplant existing arts education services. Um, voters intended this to be a supplemental to existing arts education programs. Um, and so we really are monitoring to make sure that local school districts do add new arts education programming with these funds, um, which will be anywhere from 110 to $150 uh, dollars per student at the local level. Um, there is a number of policy efforts at the state, and we're wanting to make sure the legislature is monitoring them to ensure the do not supplant clause is followed. Uh, we also are supporting the California Department of Education's recent staffing requests to make sure that they have the proper staffing at the state level to implement Prop 28 in the years ahead. Um, so we support their budget ask. Um, they have a new ask for some data positions, which will help with the monitoring and tracking and ensuring equitable implementation of Prop 28. Um, but they also have some staffing requests coming forward to make sure that those funds are distributed and that questions can get answered from local education agencies. The last thing I'll just share about Prop 28 is that 80% of funds are restricted to school personnel. Um, so we're supporting a number of measures to prioritize the teacher pipeline and ensuring that new visual and performing arts teachers get credentialed and enter the workforce. Uh, we anticipate Prop 28 will result in over 14,000 new teacher positions in the visual and performing arts, which will be one of the largest recruitments of teachers in the visual performing arts anywhere in the United States. Um, so there's a lot of work to be done to ensuring that the legislator, legislature prioritizes teacher salaries, um, and the credentialing um, of the visual and performing arts, including theater and dance. So we're thrilled that Prop 28 was passed by voters. A lot of good work to be done, um, and we're monitoring to see if there might be trailer bill legislation to clean up a couple pieces on Prop 28. We've heard that that might be the case and might be necessary, um, and so we look forward to keeping everybody posted as we learn more about that in the budget uh, for the 23-24 year. I'll pass it over to you, Julie. Thanks, Tom. And I just want to emphasize here how important it is to uh, what, what often I think advocates think we got the funding, we're good, and then we can walk move on to the next issue. And what we want to make sure is that you also understand that accountability advocacy is really an important piece of the next stage in ensuring that what you advocated for actually happens in, and is implemented in, with the intent of what you supported in the beginning. And we've had to do this on a number of different things, whether that's from relief funding now to the implementation of Prop 28. So, you know, stick with Create California, Californians for the Arts as you learn more about these things. And your voice really does matter in terms of how uh, this these types of things get implemented. Um, and, and with that in mind, I just want to share a couple of other things that we're working on, we're always working on, which is that increasing funding baseline funding for the arts. A number of things that we've talked about today, as Tom mentioned, are one-time funding. In other words, they get in that year's budget, they're one time, they do maybe a specific program, except for the implementation of Prop 28, which is now ongoing funding through the ballot measure and now the implementation. But most of these things are one time. So what's exciting now um, and, and what we want to make sure that you're talking about and socializing um, and educating your lawmakers around is the baseline funding for the state arts agency, the California Arts Council. And that currently is at $26 million. Now, when we were talking about the billions of dollars in the state budget, last year's budget was a $304 billion budget. When you look at arts funding and baseline funding, it's just been the same since 2018, 2019 budget year at $26 million. You know, we're really um, just investing 66 cents per capita in terms of funding for the arts through the state arts agency. Where other states, New York, Massachusetts, Massachusetts and others are over $2 and Minnesota is over $7. So we really wanna see this increase over time. Uh, and, and that really does in, ensure that then arts funding is accessible for all communities. That's one of the 
best things that the California Arts Council can ensure through their grant process and through um, their mechanisms, allowing for arts funding to be in all communities. And with the um, proliferation uh, often of, let's say, philanthropy in larger urban areas, this is really, really critical to our rural communities. This is critical to our Black, Indigenous, and people of color communities throughout the state that we are seeing funding and equitable distribution of funding through public funding mechanisms. And California Arts Council has done a terrific job in improving processes to see that that happens. And so we really want to see that increase in their baseline funding. Every time um, arts funding comes up in terms of um, the uh, grants that are available, they are consistently oversubscribed. Uh, it is it you can see the demand is there, but we are just too small in terms of the uh, uh, but funding allocation. So one of the things you can always talk to your elected officials about is increasing this. And we say to one, at least $1 for the arts, which would put the baseline funding for the Arts Council at 40 million versus 26 million. And that's something we'd like to see ongoing in the budget, not just a one-time increase. And then finally, there's something that we've been um, working on and we're excited that Assembly Member Wendy Carrillo has actually put this on the agenda for her um, budget committee. And uh, this is looking at a strategic plan grounded in cultural equity and creating a task force that would look at the whole of the creative industries and how state government is investing and providing resources to this incredibly valuable workforce. And it would be a planning grant. It would actually be uh, likely an RFP that would uh, request for a proposal to do a strategic plan and ensuring that it's across uh, multiple state agencies. So critically important that we increase funding for the California Arts Council, but we've also seen funding, of course, going through California Department of Education to the local control funding models within your local school districts. But we also see funding in the parks. We see tax and film credits in the go in GoBiz, Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development. We see funding going through um, California Office of Small Business Advocate. We see it going through potentially um, public health and um, all sorts of different agencies that have the capacity because we believe as part of our theme, art is in all. And so it can be in multiple places and that's a good strategy, but we wanna make sure that they're talking to each other. And when we're thinking about the future of the creative worker um, in the state of California and what systems, what resources, what benefits, what um, uh, do we need to create throughout the state and within uh, public, uh, you know, in the government to, to build a more equitable and a thriving creative workforce for the future uh, in California. So that's something we're excited that has just been introduced in terms of a million dollar budget ask through Assembly Member Carrillo's, but Carrillo's budget sub four committee. So stay tuned for more information on that. And one of the things I just wanna also impart is that Often this works pretty quickly. So, you know, uh, keeping in touch with us, reading our emails, learning what's going on. Tom and I are, uh, and our teams are working on this on a daily basis. This is our job. This is our work. We don't expect that you're going to be um, doing it at the same level and pace that we're doing it. But your engagement in this work is really what makes the difference um, for us to be successful in having these things go through. So we really, really appreciate your time here today, listening to us talk, and then hopefully getting a chance to download the documents, which will be uh, in the next slide. You'll see where you can access those. And you can download our legislative asks for this 23-24 budget, uh, California budget, and um, in at our take action section on our, our website. And um, I'm going to hand it back to Tom to any last words uh, for our viewers today. Great. Thank you, Julie. Um, I just want a second to be sure to follow us. We will be tracking the budget process for all of you and getting out real-time updates through our newsletter. Um, we also encourage you to visit on the createca.org website, our Prop 28 Frequently Asked Questions section. Um, this is real-time information coming to us from the California Department of Education on implementation. We know a lot of the nonprofit arts providers around the state are looking to see how they might partner with schools to implement Prop 28. 
Um, and there's some information there about how you could connect with your local education agency to do so. Again, these are new funds, uh, very significant new funds with over 19% uh, going to possible arts provider partnerships. And I failed to mention that earlier. And I just want to encourage anybody who's interested in learning more about Prop 28 to visit our website um, or reach out to any of the staff at Create California. Um, we thank you for all of your advocacy, both at the state level, but in local communities across California. Um, I think, as Julie mentioned, it's as important that we monitor implementation at the local level to make sure that these dollars are getting into community as we intend. So um, thank you so much for listening today, and uh, we hope to see some of you in Sacramento on Tuesday, April 18th for our Arts Advocacy Day. Let's remember to protect cultural funding, invest in the creative worker, and build for our creative future because art is in all. Thanks, everybody. Hope you have a great arts, culture, and creativity month, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.